All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the oil pump rebuild. So the nut that holds on the oil pump gear is reverse threaded, so righty tighty would be taking it off. Self-explanatory, um, we are gonna replace this. Some people weld this nut to the gear itself. Um, I really don't like doing that because this is all hardened steel, so I don't want the structural integrity compromised in any way, but I will show you guys the um, solution to this. Uh, to take off the front face, it's just four 10 millimeter bolts. And to take out the entire oil pump itself, it's just three 13 millimeters, one here, one here, and one on the back. And then I'll show you guys the, uh, the back cap section. But let me just take these four 10s off and show you what we're working with. With the four bolts removed, you can just slide this out. As you can see, it slides along the shaft. Front face comes off. This does go in a certain orientation. So make sure you keep in mind, there's only one way it goes on, and that's the way it needs to go on. Once you take that out, you can take this shaft out as well. As you can see, it just slides right out. So this is your gear, and then this is the rotor inside. So all of this we will be replacing. Another thing to note, I just wiped the oil off so you guys could see, but there's actually a brooch on this. So when you're putting it in, the brooch goes inside just like that. And then also the gear has a couple brooches on it. Oh, this one just has one, the other one has two, but just keep that in mind. Now we can work on the back section. As you can see, it's just held in by a snap ring. So take your snap ring pliers, take that out. And then basically what you wanna do is actually push down, like hold pressure here because you don't want this flying out. There is a tensioner inside, um, it's a spring. And basically you kind of just push it back and forth until it wants to come out but just hold pressure on it and it should all slide out in one shot all right so like i was saying once we have the snap ring itself out we're going to put pressure on this sleeve here um some come out pretty easy some are a little stuck so we'll see how this one is i might have to do it off camera but basically just going to push this in you might need something to help you push i might use a little extension here Kind of just work it back and forth, make sure it doesn't shoot out. As you can see, that just popped out. So this is the sleeve itself. Has an O-ring on it, which you will need to replace. I usually replace the sleeve as well because this is riding. Um, we have the spring itself, which needs to be replaced because as you can tell, this is compressed over, you know, 150,000 miles. So that'll be replaced. This plunger will just slide out. So I usually replace all of these. As you can see, there's a little bit of surface scratching on all this stuff. Um, it is riding within this sleeve. So I just like to replace it all while we're here. You know what I'm saying? It's relatively cheap. I think the sleeve, the tensioner, the plunger, all that together might be like, you know, 70 bucks. And then what you pay for is the rotor and gear. Um, I'd have to check, but those are probably around $130. So let me go ahead and show you guys the new parts. Here's the oil pump fully disassembled. We have the four bolts for the faceplate. We have the snap ring, the sleeve, the oil pump gear nut, the tensioner, the plunger, the um, gear and rotor, faceplate, and then we have the oil pump itself. What I like to do is just spray this entire thing with brake clean. So this whole cylinder in the back, and then obviously where the faceplate inserts. I, want, I just want to clean all this out. When I am reassembling with the new, you know, rotor and gear, all the plunger, tensioner, everything, I like to soak everything in oil just so it doesn't go in dry. Um, it's not super important because before I crank the motor, well, I'm going to crank the motor with no spark plugs out so it's not working against itself and it's going to build oil pressure. Um, I just don't want to assemble anything dry, obviously being an oil pump. Um, that's pretty much it though. So let me show you guys the new part. I'm gonna show you guys the parts just so you could uh, pause it and then obviously take down the part number if you need it. But here's the O-ring. Here's the tensioner. We got the new plunger. Here's the sleeve. And then the snap ring. And then this is what I'm talking about. Um, 
I like to do a wire tie. So this is basically just an OEM drilled nut. I got this from Race German, as you can see. Made in the US, which is cool. And then it's just a safety wire. And I'll show you guys how to install this. These cars are known to idle at a super low PSI. Here's the old spring compared to the new spring. Let me just set these up so you guys can see. And there's a clear difference between those coils. So this one is obviously worn out over time and the new one is in its current location. Um, but yeah, I just like to go over everything because these cars do idle super low. You know, people see like five to seven PSI at idle, which is scary low in most cars, but that's just where these cars like to sit. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that because that's a, a real reason why I do this. And let me just throw it all in. All right, here we go with the install. I have a little bit of 1040 or whatever oil you use on these motors. Also have assembly lube. Um, basically what I like to do, you can't really pour oil in this hole because it'll come right out this little uh, oil passage. So I just like to oil up, you know, anything that's gonna contact. This slides in this way. So the sleeve side is facing up. Then you're gonna take your spring. We're gonna oil this too. We're gonna place it right in here. Make sure it sits within the sleeve. As you can see, that's centered. Then we're gonna take this right here. We're also gonna take the O-ring. I'm gonna slide the O-ring, put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. I might have to do this off camera. Yeah, let me do this off camera real quick. Just threw the O-ring on. Now we're also gonna lube this up. Put it right on top of the spring. And this I'm going to have to do off camera, but basically you want to push down this. So it's going to compress the spring. At the same time, we're going to throw this snap ring within this groove. And it'll see everything in place. So we have this cylinder completely assembled now. As you can see, you want to make sure that this snap ring is totally in place. Because if it's not, that plunger is just going to shoot out. So triple check your work. Make sure it's good to go. And now we can work on the front. Once you're at this step, you wanna go ahead and look at the faces. So in this case, we're good to go. It has one line, you can't really feel it. What I have seen on some oil pumps is that all this will be totally scored inside and sometimes this will because of contamination and whatever debris gets in here. Um, as you can see, this motor had something minor. You can't feel it by nail and it's really, not that big of a deal on the housing, but I've seen way worse. Um, you can rerun these. Obviously, if you can't feel anything, it's good to go. Um, I've seen these in far worse condition, but just keep in mind, if it's worse and you could feel it, obviously go by your best judgment and just get a new housing. This one is good to go. So I'm gonna take the rotor and pump gear. And like I said before, the brooch goes towards the inside of this housing. And then the new one has three brooches and it's gonna slide right in. This only goes in one way. So just keep that in mind. Once you've put it all back together, just make sure you lubricate it and spin it by hand. Make sure that nothing is holding it back. Um, I know some people have installed the Achilles upgraded stuff and they've actually had problems with this. So just make sure everything is good to go and it spins freely. With the oil pump back in place, you want to double check these bolts. These are torqued to 89 inch pounds. And then as far as the oil pump to the block itself, those are 16 foot pounds. Now what I'm also going to do just as a precaution, even though we are putting safety wire on this, is I'm going to put some of this, some red Loctite on the shaft, and then I'm going to thread on the bolt. I'll show you guys what that is right now.